as I was taking Mishi for a walk, the key to my apartment building stopped working, so now I have an excuse to stay in my house for three days. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in for another YouTube video. Today I have a really fun tutorial and I'm going to be using the new Gina K background stamps. And I have a very interesting way of doing it and completing the actual image onto the paper. So we will get into that. And also I have just a really cool twine technique. I'm back on my twine game and I think you guys are going to really like it. So keep on watching. I know I have a little bit different of a complexion from last time you saw me. Right here it looks like sandy beach and right here it looks like passionate pink. So just try to ignore that because I am a little toasted from being out on the lake this weekend. But luckily it's not showing up too bad on camera. So. Okay, so these are the products that we will be using today. So right here I have stamps from the stamp set Sending You a Llama Love. And we will be using the Big Llama, the Little Flower, and the phrase that says Sending You a Llama Love. And we also have the corresponding dies with them. And we will just be using this one for the flower today. I also have the Gina K and Thermoweb large oval die set that are si single stitched and we'll be using this medium sized oval. And right here is the giant background stamp. Now, as you can see, it has a little bit of texture in it, kind of like burlap material. I'll zoom in more once we actually use it, but it is, it is a really cool effect once you actually stamp it. And we'll be using Amalgam Ink, and then this is Ocean Mist and Jelly Bean Green. We'll be using those on the card as well. These are my Prismacolored pencils that I will be using, and I will also be using Gamsol with them. And then here is my Gina K twine that I am using. You can use any twine you want, but this is the one I have. And here are all of my pieces of paper cut out with the layering. So it's going to have a lot of layers or a lot of levels, as James Tidd would say. So we are going to start off by stamping with the background image. As you guys can see, I have recrisped my nails. There's something stuck on there. Let me get that off. I have redone my nails, all summery and yellow for the nice weather, and I am ready to go. So starting off with our background image, we will be using the Gina K background stamp, and this is the very textured burlapy one. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what this looks like. As you can see, it looks like a burlapy like. I don't know. Whatever. It looks like a burlap material. And I've been using it in my Misty to get this effect. I removed the foam padding in my Misty just so I could slip it in there. I don't know if this is the technique, but this is the technique I've been using. And we're going to start by lining up where we want our card to go. And I'll have it right there. And then I'm taking some Thermoweb tape, putting a little bit on there and then attaching it so it sticks on there nicely. I don't know if that's right at all. If not, I can feel my mother cringing through the camera. But now I will take my Ocean Mist Ink Cube. I really wish I had a giant ink pad of this so I didn't have to cover all the surface area, but I only have ink cubes because I only have room for ink cubes. So what I'm gonna do is cover this all on here and you want to do it lightly because it could damage your ink cube if you're doing the same technique as I am because this is a textured stamp and it could pull at the ink pad a little bit but if you just do it lightly it'll get good coverage and just make sure that you have a good portion of the middle covered so it'll all be covered once you put the lid down okay now I'm going to Flip and press, really rub it in there. Gotta work those muscles that I don't use anymore. Okay, and now we flip. Beautiful, look at that. Okay, I'm just gonna let it dry for a second. 
So this is what it looks like up close. It's super cute and is very intricate, but if you get a good press on it, then it should cover completely. I kind of like how it looks a little washed over here. So that is the background stamp and our background image so far. And now we are going to work on the llama, which is the centerpiece of the card. So our next step is to take our llama and put it on an acrylic block. And I will be using the Gina K Amalgam Ink to accomplish this stamp. Get a nice crisp image. Move all the hairs out of the way prior to stamping. Beautiful, oh my gosh. Okay, so there's our stamped image. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this light grayish brownish color it's kind of a beige and I will be making the hairs on the llamas so what I'm going to do is just make lines following these little fringes on here I found that to be the most effective and just draw them like little streaks as hairs would look and then keep going down as you do it this will give it a nice, like, shaggy look. Whenever we drive to the Dells when we were younger, there'd always be a llama farm, and I would stop and point and say llamas, because I'm from the Midwest, and any time Midwesterners see animals outside of the windows, they have to point and say the name of the animals. So now that the neck is done, I'm going to start doing this part, and as you can see, it, like, curves, so I'm just going to follow the curve of the llama just first on the outside. If you hear any like crinkling in the background, that is Mishi chewing on a toy, which I would apologize for, but it's not on my foot, so I am happy about it. Okay, and see how that all blends all nicely and it looks like a very fluffy llama? So now what I'm going to do is go around the face with the same technique you could say. I'm literally just making little lines. Oh, Mishi, stop it! He's getting into the trash. He loves trash so much. That's why he loves his mama. And now I'm just going to color in the center on the nose right here because I'm going to use Gamsol to blend that out. But I want to make it on the nose because the nose will be the darker area of the llama. And now I'm going to Press a little harder with the same color on the ears to make it look a little darker while staying in the lines because I'm an adult and a professional in the crafting industry and I can stay in the lines. Okay, I just got out of the lines. Okay, we'll just forget about that. Now I'm going to take a very small Creative Mark blender and I'm going to take a little bit of Gamsol into the cap, which is the most effective measure I've found. I'm just going to take a little bit and blend in circular motions outward. And remember, with the amalgam ink, it won't smear if you use um, Gamsol with it. So now we're going to move on to the actual die cutting process, but because my table is too small to support my die cutting machine, I'm going to do it off camera, but I will show you how it lines up. This is the medium sized die, and we want to leave, we can use the smaller one, it will fit in, but I want to leave a little extra because I will be using twine on this, so I recommend the medium one, so I will do that off camera right now. So that's what the cut out image looks like so far. I forgot the most important utensil of all in uh, the beginning, but that is the stick tool. So we will be using this to create the holes on this, and I want to warn everyone, I have no method of measuring this, but, you know, that's no different from anything else I do. I'm using this piece of foam I have to not poke holes onto my desk, and I'm just going to poke out the holes that I want. The first one kind of determines where the rest of the holes will go, so I'm going to put it, like, here. 
My stick tool just retracted into it. It's like, nope, I want you to measure. And you just want to make it a little bit bigger so you can get the twine through. You can just work it in there, stretch it out. Okay, and now you want to put one about here. About the same, but on the bottom. And just stretch it out a little bit. You want to be gentle because the stick tool could bend your project and you don't want that. Okay, so now that we have all of our holes poked in, we are going to take our twine and just stuff them in. So, last time I did this, I had no technique, and now that I'm back trying again, I still have no technique. So, I just kind of tighten the twine and use my stick tool to jam it through. And this is not very effective, but it's the best option I have at the moment. If you just take if it just takes a little bit of patience and time and effort to do so, but eventually the string will go through the other side and you can pull it through. And then all you need is to cut about this much and then I like to tie it in a knot. So I like to do a double knot just to be safe because I don't want anything to shift my project more than my lack of skill already will. So that is double knotted and I will now repeat that for all the holes. So now we're going to take this and forget about it for a while and we're going to move on to the greeting and the little flowers that we are going to color with the Gamsol. So now I just have a scrap piece of white cardstock and I'm going to take my flower stamp on a, an acrylic block and I'm going to use the Jelly Bean Green. I decided on this color because uh, the leaves on this were very small and if you made it all green then they would just, it would make it look better. And I'm just gonna stamp two. What are you doing? Oh, Mishi, no! Making too much noise on set, Mishi. So just give them enough space so you can die cut them. And that's what they look like. So now I'm going to take my colored pencils, just threw it across the room, and I'm going to color the flowers opposite so they look a little different so on this one I will color the first flower on top pink just by outlining with the pink and then on this one we will do the second flower pink And now we'll take our blue, our turquoise color, and do the same, but opposite. So once again, I will take a tiny cap full of Gamsol and just blend these with the blending stump. In circular motions. <laughs> just take the green. I have decided not to use Gamsol because the images are so tiny, but I will just color them in so they are all green. Now I will send them flying through my die cut machine and I will be back. Okay, so those are my cutout images. I think I did an okay job of cutting them out. And now we can move on to stamping our greeting and assembling the card. Okay, so I took the liberty of stamping out the greeting and cutting it out. I didn't really use measurements. I just kind of cut it around the stamped greeting just so it would look even and coherent. These two we can seal down without having to pry it up to get the twine underneath it. So we just want to make sure it's even 
probably won't be. Ooh, that's actually pretty even. Okay, so now that we have that, we are going to take some 3D foam squares onto our llama and just put it on the back. I'm going to use four because that's all we really need. And then making sure I don't get any of the twine stuck underneath and making sure Mishi doesn't swallow any of these little pieces. I'm going to assume it to the upper portion of the card and just about there. There we go. Does that look even? Kind of? Sort of? Okay. And now what we are going to do is take the twine and we're going to do some creative creative designs here. So I just would take a swipe of thermoweb tape on this side and a swipe of thermoweb tape on this side. So now what we are going to do is create a zigzag pattern with the twine. So starting with the top ones, you just want to make sure they look even and matching for the top. And now you want to take these two and bring them together and kind of twist them like this so they come together and don't really move and you want to make sure it comes to a point this is going to be a task give me a second here so twist make sure you can see the little triangle and then seal on the back easy enough and now you just kind of want to match this one to the top ones and seal it to the back easy enough right all right we'll do it with this one as well so kind of twist these together and assume to the back and then put this one about there See? Easy enough. And now we can, because there's already a bunch of tape on here, I'm still going to put a little bit on the bottom. You can cut these little fringes so long that these are sealed in place because there's really no need to have that underneath. It could cause some distortion in your card, so be wary of that. And now we can place this on the card like so. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, and finally we are going to put the greeting on. I, nothing fancy here, just regular tape. And right in the center. And now we are going to once again put these on, but make them look a little different. We don't want them to be exact mirrors of each other. So one right there, and then one like this. Okay, so that's what that looks like so far and now we just put this on our card base. I believe this is grass green cardstock. And make sure it's even. Okay. And there we go. There is our finished card. Very cute, very fun, relatively easy, and just a pretty card. Mishi, do you like this hangy? Oh, 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 he's biting it. Oh, come on, come on. So guys, this is the finished card. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I like this pattern and I like how it all looks. I'm thinking about giving this to my dad for Father's Day, which is coming up very soon, and that's actually on the day that I will be doing my next video, so there's really no... I don't really think I'm gonna do a card for him on that day because it's Father's Day on that day. So I'll give this one to him. He likes these colors and it is... I know it has pink flowers on it, but he also has three women in his family, so he has to deal with some girliness. My little honey was sleeping. Stop chewing just in time for the end of the video. Give me a kiss. Please. They need to know you love me.
Okay, fine. So, uh, for last week's video, I promised the Anemone Wishes bundle, which included the stamp set, and the dies that came with it. So, the winners of that giveaway are here. So, if you see your name, remember to send I won the Rena K giveaway to info at GinaKDesigns.com. Oh, honey, so sleepy. And uh, we will send your products out immediately. So, for this week's giveaway, I will be also giving a bundle for this set, which is the Sending You a Llama Love. And the question that you have to comment to be entered in the run. run blah, 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 blah. The question you have to answer to be entered in the giveaway is what are you doing for Father's Day? It can be anything. It can just be your weekend plans. I don't care, but just let me know. I will be at home, actually. Oh, there it is. Oh, yes, see, he does love me. It's probably just because I have some sauce left over on my face from eating earlier, but I'll accept it, honey. Thank you. So let me know what your plans are for this upcoming Father's Day and you could possibly win the llama bundle. So thanks again for watching. If you like this video, remember to like it. And if you want to see more of me uh, stressing out over more cards and Gina K products, remember to subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I have a really cute dog that you can see every week. That's a reason to come back, right? Oh, honey, he's so sleepy. Okay, so thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Say bye, my little Haney. Say bye. Say bye. Oh, he just bit me. Okay. Goodbye.